I'm on a boat about 20 miles from New York City, and we are headed out to a place where the seafloor is littered with sunken ships. It's known as Wreck Valley, and these ships are the remnants and the casualties, really, of 300 years of shipping traffic in and out of New York City. Today, I'm headed to the Black Warrior, a cargo and passenger ship built in New York in 1852. She sank after running aground during a heavy fog in 1859. All right, so that marker buoy that we put in the water marks the general location of the wreck. This is an image that's done with sound waves, and it's like a camera taking a picture off the right side of the boat. Here's the wreck here. This is sand, and then we're coming up on the wreck. Sometimes half the battle of scuba diving is suiting up, especially for the chilly mid-Atlantic. With the water temp around 60 degrees, some of the crew were putting on dry suits. He's good. I opted for two 7 millimeter wetsuits. So I just go back? No, no, no. Go back. Yep. This is real adventure. You're dealing with limited visibility and cold water, and sometimes there's currents, and sometimes there's, there's surge. The northeast diving is not for everyone because most of the time you can't see. It's, it's definitely hardcore in a sense. The currents were strong, so we had to pull ourselves down to the wreckage by ropes. Visibility was five feet at best, so for a while we saw nothing. Then finally, the Black Warrior's remnants appeared. The boiler is one of the key landmarks on the Black Warrior. It provides the highest relief on the site. Probably sticks up a good eight to 10 feet off the bottom. Often you can still see the brass spikes or brass pins holding that wood together. Those are the pins that actually held the beams of the ship together. The majority of wrecks that we have within Wreck Valley get flattened pretty quickly uh, by the power of Mother Nature. Most of the historical wrecks, especially the wood ones, uh, break down. They become junkyards on the bottom. But for Wreck Valley divers, these boat graveyards are the perfect place to dig for artifacts. Previous finds from the Black Warrior include engraved silverware, portholes, and a 2,000-pound anchor. 1920s vintage Jacob Rupert Brewer two-piece uh, beer bottle. The seam mark, if you can look at the seam, doesn't go through the crown neck top, so you can date it back to the 1920s, 1923. It's not from the wreck, but this wreck has been fished since the late 1800s, so people have been fishing here and drinking a bottle of beer every once in a while, tossing it overboard. You can't always get anchors. <laughs> <laughs> or dead eyes, or <laughs> this was good enough for me. This is this is perfect treasure for me. Lizzie D was a prohibition rum runner. It was sunk back in 1922, unknown reasons. And divers that that get down deep inside the wreck and and do a decent amount of digging can still come up with full bottles of whiskey, prohibition illegal whiskey. So I mean, is this? The original liquid in here, is that, that the That's the original liquid, but you wouldn't want to put your lips anywhere near it. No? No. Did you try it? N no. Once you smell that, you wouldn't want to put your lips anywhere, anywhere near it. It's pretty rancid. With the shipwreck divers who recover artifacts, there's a big debate what the, whether they're doing is right or not. There's a group of archaeologists that say that they should be left in place um, and shouldn't be touched. The problem with that is these artifacts are getting destroyed. We, as wreck divers, are absolutely preserving the history of these local shipwrecks. Mm -hmm.